Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. Some years ago, honey, you remember, we came across an interesting group of thoughts. Here's what it said. Money can buy a house, but not a home. Money can buy a bed, but not sleep. Money can buy a clock, but not time. Money can buy you a book, but not, but not knowledge. Money can buy you medicine, but not health. Money can buy you sex, but not love. And it went on to say, so you see, money isn't everything. And it often causes pain and suffering. I tell you all this because I'm your friend. And as your friend, I want to take away your pain and suffering. So send me all your money, and I'll suffer for you. <laughs> I remember that joke. That's a funny joke to me. Yeah, but it's not necessarily accurate, to be honest. The presupposition... And, and not necessarily a joke. That's true. The presupposition is that money will never buy you happiness. That money isn't everything. That thought process presupposes that a person values money above everything else. And that's not necessarily the truth. Money does not buy you happiness, nor does it determine your happiness. And that's the key. Happiness is an outward expression of an inner work. And it depends on what you do and how you respond to what happens to you. For people to be truly happy, there must be an inner realization of the mental and spiritual commitments they've made to be more than what they are to do more than what they've already done, and to bless more people than they thought imaginable. Mm. Happiness is a spiritual quality, a mind of rich thoughts from the Word, a heart of compassion for others, forgiving and forgetting past offenses, and the ability to see good in everything. Happiness is a decision. You decide whether or not you'll be happy regardless of your circumstances. Happiness is something that radiates from deep inside of you. Hallelujah. Deep inside of you. Happiness is not situational. Yet there are times when you might be happier because of something that's changed in your environment. Happiness is a habit, just like worry is a habit. Based on which you choose, happiness or unhappiness, you will find your thought life to either be constructive or destructive. Unhappiness will make or keep you sick. Happiness is more than an attitude. Well, it's more than an attitude than anything else. It's reflected by the values one has chosen to live by. It is for this reason. A person who appears to have little in the way of goods, money, or possessions can seem truly happy, or how a man with an abundant bank account and more things than he can comfortably store can appear so absolutely miserable and destitute. The pursuit of happiness is not found in the pursuit of things. Things or the pursuit of things isn't the real problem. It is the pursuit of these things above all else. Things then become idols placed above God. We need to ask ourselves, are we truly happy? And if we determine just what we are pursuing doesn't make us happy, is the race worth all that we're putting into it to reach that destination? In 1 John 2, 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17, in the New International Version, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does not come from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Now, let's look at six, well, are those six pre, presuppositions about money one more time. First, Money can buy a house, but not a home. Consider this fact. If you don't have money, even the godliest, most spiritually balanced of families will never own a home. 
But it does take more than money to buy a house. It takes something more powerful to provide a home. Genesis 18, 19, 18, 19, the classic Amplified Bible. For I have known, chosen, acknowledged. Let me say it again. For I have known, chosen, acknowledged him as my own, so that he may teach and command his children and the sons of his house after him to keep the way of the Lord and to do what is just and righteous, so that the Lord may bring Abraham what he promised him. Money can buy a bed, but not sleep. Have you ever lost sleep because you felt like you just weren't going to be able to afford to pay all the bills and you were wondering maybe about if you're going to lose your job or just the economic situation in this world? Have you ever tossed and turned all night because you were wondering where your family's next meals are coming from? Money cannot buy you peace of mind, but it can give you peaceful sleep in the middle of a financial storm. And actually, let me put it this way, it can't give you peaceful sleep in a financial storm, but, but God can. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 24. Proverbs 3, verse 24 in the Classic Amplified says, When you lie down, you shall not be afraid. Yes, you shall lie down in your sleep shall be sweet. The next one was money can buy a clock, but not time. Yes, money can't buy you time. However, money can prevent you from having to work two jobs or your spouse working at all. So your health is good enough that you can live to spend more time with your children and grandchildren. Money can give you the freedom to spend your time where and when you like. Colossians 4, 5, 4, 5, classic Amplified Bible. Behave yourselves wisely, living prudently and with discretion in your relations with those of the outside world, the non-Christians, making the very most of the time and seizing, buying up the opportunity. Money can buy you a book, but not knowledge. Here's an interesting fact. If you don't buy any good books, then it's much more difficult for you to acquire knowledge. Obviously, the greatest book you could ever buy is the Bible because it's so filled with knowledge and wisdom. There are millions, if not billions, of people around the world who will never tap into the available knowledge simply because they can't afford to buy a book. However, if the Bible is the only book you own, you can read it every day and ask God to open up those gates of wisdom throughout the ages and learn how to navigate through this life. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 in the Classic Amplified tells you what you need to know. Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will and thought, purpose, and action, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Those are two powerful verses. They are. Hallelujah. Next, money can buy you medicine, but not health. There are countless thousands, if not millions of people around the world who will die today because they couldn't afford to buy medicine. Scripture says that each of us, we're to care for the widows and the orphans. We're to share God's love and resources with those less fortunate than ourselves. And truthfully, we can't do that if we're so broke we can't buy medicine, even for ourselves let alone for others. James 1.27, James 1.27, New Living Translation. Religion that pleases God the Father must be pure and spotless. You must help needy orphans and widows and not let this world make you evil. Wow. Money, <clears throat> excuse me, can buy you sex but not love. The implication here is that you can pay for sex but not love. And that's agreed, but unfortunately, that's illegal in most 
all states, believe me, except one that I know of. However, let's look at this from a different perspective. Money gives you the freedom to do <clears throat> excuse me, special things you like for the one that you do love. Money is a facilitator for your romantic intentions and offers security for the ones that you love the most. And as we were writing about this, we felt led to share 1 Corinthians 13, which is about real love, verses 4 through 8 in the classic Amplified Bible, the love chapter. And this is what it says for us. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, <clears throat> excuse me, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It, for it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, you notice that being God's love. That's right. Is ever ready to believe the best of every situation. Excuse me. The best of every person. Forgive me. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. And then one final thought. The question, honey, that we want to ask is this, and make this point. The question isn't whether money is good or evil, but rather, what is our attitude toward it? Or how we use it. That's right. Our actions when we have money and we don't have money reveal our attitude about money. Money can't buy your relationship with God, but it can provide you with the opportunity to spend time in His presence and obey him when he wants you to help fund his kingdom. And if you get nothing else out of this call, remember this. Don't chase money. Chase God. Then money will chase you. Hallelujah. Seek first the kingdom and all those things will be added. That's right. If you've been blessed by the teaching, go to heraldherring.com at the top where it says soul seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.